Have you ever wondered how to grow a mandarin? Sun requirements, winter care, watering, fertilization. Do you even know what a mandarin is or what it tastes like? Well, if the answer to any of those questions is yes, today I'm going to be giving you growing tips how to grow your own mandarin and also I'm going to be doing a taste review of two different varieties that I have growing in the ground. So let's go ahead and get started. What is a mandarin? Well, a mandarin is actual, it's an actual orange. Yes, it's just an orange variety. Who knew? I didn't know that until I started doing some research. The name comes from China. Um, back in the day, Portuguese people used to call ministers mandarin, just mispronunciation. And since the fruits were coming out of China, that's where the name came from. Tangerines are actually the same thing too, but they come from Tangi. Morocco, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And since they came from that area, that's why, that's why they call them tangerines. So technically, tangerines and mandarins and oranges are all the same. But in today's time, tangerines are gonna be more tart, mandarins are gonna be smaller and sweeter, and oranges normally are gonna be bigger and usually harder to peel with your fingers. So that is the main difference between all of them. But in reality, they are all the same. It's just an orange hybrid. And that brings us to growing requirements. Sun requirements. Regardless of the variety that you're growing, your mandarin will take full sun anywhere in the United States. As always, if it takes full sun in my area, I'm in the desert, it will take full sun in yours. Now you have to understand, if you live in an area with extreme temperatures like mine, the first summer in the ground, your mandarin will sunburn. This is normal, don't worry about it. Once your tree is actually fully rooted in the ground, well, then it will not sunburn anymore, but you need direct sunlight. They do not like to grow in the shade. Winter care. Mandarins, surprisingly, they can take a lot of cold, like in the high teens, no issues at all. Like this one right here has taken 19 degrees without any issues. Now, the only problem you're gonna have in colder climates is, well, fruits. Your fruits are normally ripening in the winter time. So if you get that cold for that long, guess what's gonna happen? Your fruits are going to freeze and drop. So if you get cold like that every single year, all your fruits are gonna freeze and they are going to drop every single winter. So it's kind of pointless to grow a mandarin in colder climates unless you just wanna keep it in a container. But the tree itself would tolerate really cold temperatures. The main problem you're gonna have is just fruits. Now, if you're not sure if you can grow the tree or not, well, this is the uh, defining line. And that is, if your soil freezes in the winter time because you get cold for that long, then your mandarin tree will probably die. So, let's talk about the root system. The root system of mandarin trees is just like any other citrus. It's a combination of deep roots and shallow roots. So, you can either keep it in a container if you wanted to, or you can put it in the ground, but always in the ground, they are going to perform a lot better. The roots are not that invasive to the point where they're gonna be pushing your house or a wall just like that. But make sure you give it plenty of room because as your tree gets older, well, remember the trunk is gonna get bigger too, so you gotta make sure you have enough space for the trunk and the root crown. Tree structure. Mandarins are just like any other citrus. They are bushes, just like this one right here. But if you want a tree with a round canopy on the top, you can always prune them that way when they are young like this. So what you do is you just prune all the lower branches, you keep a single trunk, and then over the years, your tree will stop growing branches from the bottom and then it will remain as a single trunk canopy on the top. This is personal choice. What are the benefits? Well, if you keep it as a single trunk, then your tree is gonna be more ornamental. It's gonna look nicer. But if you keep it as a bush, you're gonna get a lot more branches. More branches means more flowers, more flowers means more fruits. So it just depends on of what you want are out of your tree. You want tons of fruits? Well, keep it a, as a bush. You want something that looks nice, but you also want some fruits? Well, then go ahead and prune it. Your choice. Pollination. 
technically you you don't need another tree in order to pollinate your um, mandarin tree it is self pollinating but one thing that I've noticed after planting another variety next to my market over there is this year I got a lot more fruits because they got cross pollinated so once the trees get older it really doesn't matter you're gonna notice a bigger difference when the trees are young because they're not holding as much fruit but if you really are into production my recommendation is to plant at least another variety so that way you can increase your yield but if you don't you're still gonna get plenty of fruits so don't worry about it but technically you only need only one tree to pollinate flowering and fruiting well citrus in general in my area this is going to depend in the area that you live in they flower in the spring for me spring usually starts around March you're gonna see the flowers and then all those flowers normally take most of the year to turn into fruit and ripen fully like right now we are at the end of January so as you can see I have a lot of fruits that are ripening so all of the fruits do take a while to actually go from flower to fruit that is ready to eat another thing that you gotta keep in mind is plants are not machines so not all your fruits are going to ripen at the same time some are gonna be ripe some are not gonna be ripe so keep that in mind especially if your plants are new in the ground like this one right here let's talk about watering so how do you water your citrus well if your citrus is in the ground let's say it's the first summer in the ground the first year in the ground you want to follow the finger method and I actually have another video talking about planting and growing this daisy mandarin but technically the first year in the ground you want to follow the finger method and that is you water your tree and then I would say every 12 to 24 hours after you know your tree has been wet you're gonna stick your finger a few inches away from the trunk all the way down and then you're gonna feel for moisture the minute you no longer feel water on the tip of your finger however long it took to go from wet to that point that's exactly how often you're gonna water your mandarin the first year in the ground as your tree gets older you're gonna need to deep water because this tree has a deep root system especially once you put it in the ground and that is where it drinks the water the older the tree gets the deeper the root system of this plant is going to go into the ground and that is where you want the water to get to every time you do water the good thing about plants with deep roots like this is you can water slowly for a very long time to allow the water to penetrate the soil several feet but then you don't have to water for a long time now if your tree is in a container you're gonna follow the 50% rule this rule is very very easy to follow you're gonna water your tree until it's fully wet and then every I would say in the summer depending on your temperatures if you're living in an area with extreme temperatures like mine I would say check your container every six hours and then you're gonna wait until this container is dry 50% however long it takes to go from fully wet to 50% dry that is how often you water this plant in the container forever regardless of the size of the container that you have your citrus in and that brings us to fertilization so how do you fertilize your mandarin well if your tree is in the ground it's extremely easy to fertilize your plants you don't need to buy anything special do not fall into the uh, citrus fertilizers meant for citrus and all the junk that you see everywhere I can tell you I got tons of citrus in the ground and I don't do anything special I use a universal fertilizer and that is organic material this is just a little bit of horse poop right here just to give you guys an example of what I do so maybe once a year or so what you do with your plants in the ground you get some organic material horse poop cow poop bat poop chicken poop whatever poop you want to use it doesn't really matter compost even and then what you do is you just dump it 
close by to your plant. Just like that. And you're done. Now this is a little fresh. So I'm only doing a little bit. So what fresh means is it has a lot of ammonia in there. It has a lot of pee in there. So if your compost or if your uh, whatever poop you're using is wet, you gotta make sure you let it dry. So what you do is you put it in a pile in the sun, let it dry for a few months, and then you can go ahead and use it. Or you can do what I do here. Don't use that much. Put it really away from your plant. I know the root system of this plant is over here. I'm putting the uh, uh, horse poop right here. And what you're actually doing is, check this out. You're not feeding your plant. No. You know what you're actually doing? You're feeding the living organisms in the soil. All the insects, the bacteria, the fungi, all the stuff in the soil. They are the ones that eat this stuff right here. They eat it up, they break it down, then themselves they will poop. Now the poop is so small, when mixed with water, then the root system of this plant will be able to eat those nutrients. Until this is broken down, your plant will not be able to eat. This process takes months. It takes a very long time. So keep that in mind when using organic fertilizers in the ground. But the good thing about that process is this organic material will bring life to the soil and that life in the soil is what's going to actually amend your soil. It will improve drainage and also they are going to be feeding your plant slowly. This is what you want, especially if you have your plants in the ground. Now, if your plants are in the ground, it's even easier than that. Here at the nursery, this is what we use. It's Osmocote. Do not emphasize on the numbers. Don't worry about the numbers, okay? The numbers are irrelevant. Now, the only reason we use this fertilizer here at the nursery is because it's a slow-release fertilizer. So the way this fertilizer works is the food is inside these pellets. During the growing season only, here at the nursery, we probably fertilize once or twice a year, depending on how lazy I'm feeling that year. But even with that inconsistent fertilization, my trees grow, my trees fruit. So guess what? Yours will grow and they will fruit too. But the reason I like this fertilizer is because you can get a handful just like this, that much. You don't need any more than that. And then you can just throw in your container, just like that. And boom, your tree is good to go for the next few months. Every time those pellets get wet, they will release the fertilizer slowly into the soil, feeding your plant. Now this is synthetic. So as soon as the fertilizer hits the soil and mixes with water, your plant will eat it immediately. The reason I like this is because it's slow release. So it will not release all the fertilizer all at once. So it's extremely hard to burn your plants from over fertilizing them with synthetic fertilizer like this because it releases it very slow it's dummy proof it worked for me it will work for you now the reason I recommend this one is because we use this on every single plant here at the nursery we use it on citrus mango trees star fruits sapote loquats mulberry trees banana plants house plants eucalyptus barbados cherries we use it on every single plant, flowering plants, all fruit trees, everything. And guess what? They all grow and they all look nice and they do what they're supposed to do when you feed them. It's not about the numbers, guys. Don't worry about that. It's about the slow release. And you don't have to buy this brand. If you can find something else in your area that has a, that has a slow release, go ahead and use that. And the reason I say the numbers don't matter is because when you fertilize your plants, the fertilizer mixes with water, right? And where does water go? Well, it goes to the bottom of the container, out the drainage holes, and then into the ground. Most of the fertilizer you give your plant actually gets drained out of the container. Your plant doesn't even have time to eat it. You think your plant cares about the numbers? No, it does not, because most of that gets flushed down the toilet 
just like the stuff that you eat. Can you feed them organically? Of course you can. It's just a little more labor intensive and you gotta do it a lot more often. And since I have tons of plants guys, it just gets very labor intensive and I just don't have the time. So this works best for me. You can do whatever you like, but at least you know the hows and the whys of everything. And that brings us to container growing. Can you grow your mandarin in a container? Of course you can. All the citrus that we have here at the nursery are in containers and they do just fine simply because they have a combination of deep roots and fibrous roots. So in containers, the fibrous roots is what's gonna help your citrus plant grow better in the container. As your plant gets older, the root system of your plant is gonna get bigger. So at that point, you got two choices. You can either root prune, that means cut the roots all the way around, hang on the bottom a little bit, and then repot it into the same container, or you can up pot it into a bigger container. A few inches wider, a few inches deeper. If you're gonna do either one of those, then you can go ahead and keep your plant indefinitely in a container. And that brings us to my personal growing tips. Tip number one, once you put your tree in the ground, it is normal not to see any growth out of it for at least the first year. If it does grow, great for you. But if it doesn't, that is normal. The reason this happens with plants in the ground is because your plant is concentrating on growing roots. During the rooting process, your plant may not grow any at all. And if it does flower and fruit, it may lose all its flowers and it may, dro it may drop all its fruits. This is normal until your plant is semi or fully rooted in the ground. Now, if you don't take care of it, you forget to water, it wilts on you. Something happens to your plant. Now, instead of taking a year to root itself in the ground, guess what? It may take now a year and a half or even two years. And during this time, no growth and maybe no fruits for you. This is normal. Tip number two. It is normal for your plant to sunburn the first summer in the ground. This is especially true in areas with extreme temperatures. Don't worry about it, the sun is not going to kill your plant. Now, direct sunlight, extreme temperatures, to the trunk of your plant may sunburn it and it may damage your plant. At that point, if your plant is out there in the middle of the field without any shade at all or anything around it to give it some relief from the extreme temperatures, then go ahead and paint your trunk white with a trunk paint or you can just wrap it with burlap or shake cloth or something. Just until your tree gets older and it actually grows some bark on its trunk. Tip number three. It is normal for your tree to look gnarly for at least the first few years in the ground. And by gnarly, I mean like this. You can see all my leaves are deformed. And this is due to aphids or thrips and for whatever reason they seem to love citrus especially the new growth when you have new growth what they do is they lay their eggs inside the foliage and when the larvae hatches they actually suck the juices out of the leaf this is cosmetic damage only and it will not harm your tree it just looks ugly if you want to learn more about uh, citrus uh, leaf curling, different types, yellow leaves and all that good stuff. Well, I got other videos in my channel you can actually watch that I give you more details. But this over here, this is due to aphids or thrips. All right, guys, so that brings us to the taste review. I got two different varieties to taste review today. The first one is this daisy mandarin right here. I think it's been in the ground for two years now. I actually got a video on my channel planting this uh, tree, so I guess you can take this as an update video to this plant. As you can see, it has grown a lot. And I did forget to water it because initially I was watering by hand, I think. So it did wilt a little bit on me. So this is the first true crop that I'm getting out of it. So let's go ahead. 
so we can go ahead and taste it. When picking your citrus, how can you tell if they're ready to pick or not? Well, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and squeeze it. If it feels hard, firm, then it's not ready. If you pick it and eat it, it's going to be tart. So what you want to do is pick the ones that are soft. Now this one here gives. You can see my finger squeezing and you can see the fruit giving. That means it's ready to pick. This one here is hard. Let me see. I'm just squeezing it, but the fruit's not giving. So let's go ahead and pick this one right here. You can go ahead and twist it a few times and then you go ahead and pull. Daisy Mandarin. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with Marcot. Now this Marcot right here has been in the ground for a few years now. I don't remember, I think four years. Um, and uh, it's actually on C35 rootstock. If you're one of those uh, rootstock fanatics, that rootstock is not supposed to grow in my area. It's supposed to be junk. It's supposed to be only for California. Blah, 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 blah. That topic is actually belongs to the gardening myth uh, section of my channel. So I'll be making another video on, on rootstocks in the future, but the tree looks amazing, it grows great, and to be honest, I have never seen the rootstock of a plant make the grafted part of the plant stronger. Different video though. So let's go ahead and pick a, a fruit on this one. Remember I told you earlier that your fruits are gonna be different size? Look at this one here. You can see these are bigger and you can see these are smaller. Why? Well, guess what? Plants are living beings just like you and I and just like you and I, they're all different. They're not machines, they're not consistent, so this is normal. So we're gonna apply the same rule. Let's pick the ones that are soft. So squeeze, squeeze. This one's hard. Squeeze hard. Oh, I can tell this one's ready. Squeeze. Oh, look at that. Yeah, this one's perfect. So let's pick this one. Now, the main difference that I noticed between the two varieties is the size. This one here is a daisy. You can see how big that is. This one right here is a marcat. You can see how small it is. Now, the marcat has some bigger ones out there. But most of the tree is actually smaller like this. So big, it's not actually the true size of the market. But generally, daisy is bigger than market. And you can tell because all my daisies on this other tree were actually more consistent in size like this. Market, more consistent, are the smaller ones. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, marca. Let's go ahead and taste. The skin peels very easily. If your fruits are not ready to pick, the first thing you're gonna notice is the skin is gonna be hard to peel. If the skin is hard to peel, you know your fruits are not gonna be sweet. So they should they should fall off very easily, just like this. Let's go ahead and taste it. Very sweet. Really sweet. There's no tartness to it. But sometimes they're gonna be a little tart, especially if they're not fully ripe. Now let's go ahead and taste the daisy. Daisy was a little harder to peel, but that's because my tree is young, so the fruits are not consistent. So keep that in mind. As the tree gets older, the taste of your fruit is actually going to be more consistent, and you're going to have a lot more selection because you're going to have a lot more fruits to pick from. Now, let's go ahead and eat it. I cannot put the whole thing in my mouth because it's too big. So that's the first difference between the two. Okay, 
this is different. This one's sweet, guys. But they have a, they have a different type of sweetness. You can clearly tell the difference between the two varieties just by the flavor of it. And it's really good. Another thing that I forgot to mention, both are going to have seeds, but not every fruit is going to have seeds. Some of them have one, some of them have a bunch, so it just depends. Daisy tastes really good, guys. If I had to pick one or the other, I don't know, it's a very hard choice. Morcat is super sweet, but this one is sweet, but it has a special taste to it. I don't know, guys. I think I'll be happy with either one of them. But anyways, guys, that was my taste review. Uh, hopefully this was uh, helpful to you if you're trying to grow a mandarin. Remember, a mandarin is just an orange. Uh, in today's standards, um, mandarins are going to be sweeter. Uh, tangerines are going to be tart. Uh, more tart than sweet. So that's usually how we define the differences between the two nowadays. But anyways, as always, if you like the video, don't forget to like it so other people can see it. Because the more you like it, the more this video will get recommended to other people. If you have any questions, comment below as always. And I will see you next time.